What's up YouTube? This is CJ and Sarah. It's a Wednesday and that means it's time for another keto conversation. So let's get started. All right, so this week we're going to talk about uh, 10 health conditions that may benefit from a ketogenic diet. We're only going to cover five this week. It's going to be a two-part It's going to be a two-part conversation. And then we'll do the other five next week. Uh, we will put a link, however, to the article that we're referencing. Yes. Uh, because it actually talks about 15 yes. uh, health conditions that might benefit from a ketogenic diet. So, okay. But we're only, only going to cover... Right. But I thought what was nice about it is this is an evidence-based yes. magazine article. And you don't yes. find those very often. Usually they're sensationalized or they're negative about yeah. the ketogenic lifestyle. So to find one in a reputable magazine that was really positive was like groundbreaking in my yeah. opinion. So it, it, so it has, you'll see if you follow the link that it has references to studies that have been done. Um, and other resources that they use to draw the information right. from. This is by no means a you know fully detailed synopsis of anything. No, we're not, just, we're not gonna be geeking out too bad here. No, it's just no. information. It's interesting information and our hope is is that you will then take some time to do some reading on your own, to do some research on your own if you're interested in getting more information. Um, as well. So, because we've discussed before that continuing education on the ketogenic lifestyle is a real key to success, especially yes. longevity on this lifestyle. Yes. It's continuing to educate yourself. Yes. And so, again, we're just going to cover five today and let's get right to it. So, the first one um, on your list and on my list is mel mel metabolic syndrome. Mentabolic is what it feels like sometimes. <laughs> metabolic syndrome. So that's a fancy term for hyperinsulinemia or mm -hmm. insulin resistance. Right. So. And you will see us kind of look at notes or reference the article. Right. And so essentially you can be diagnosed with metabolic syndrome if uh, you have three, any one of the three, um, any one of the, it's actually five conditions. Criteria. Criteria, uh, large waistline, uh, 35 inches, and then uh, 40 for men and 35 for, yeah, 40 for women. For men, right. 35 for women. Uh, elevated triglycerides, low HDL, cholesterol, high blood pressure, elevated fasting blood sugar. Right. And uh, when I started keto, I had you fit into this parameter. I had, right. I fit right. into this parameter, and it was interesting that as I started getting diagnosed, the I was pre-diabetic first, right, right. Uh, as they were looking at numbers, so I was classified as pre-diabetic, right. and then eventually as time progressed, I was, I guess, full labeled full-fledged uh, type 2 diabetic, right. and put on medications. And so, uh, the ketogenic diet, there's been research that shows and studies that show that it can help with metabolic syndrome. I don't know right. why I can't say that. <laughs> and the, actually the study that they did was a controlled 12-week study mm -hmm. and they took people with metabolic syndrome on a ketogenic diet and they lost 14% of their body fat in 12 weeks. And so that decreased their triglycerides by more than 50% and they experienced several other improvements in health markers. And the thing with metabolic syndrome is that a lot of why it occurs, so scientists agree and doctors as well, is a lot of times it has to do with your weight, having weight to lose, kind of up all of these markers. So by practicing the ketogenic diet, they're able to lose weight and thus bring down a lot of these markers and put them within safe levels so that their insulin is under control. Right, right. All right, so that's one. And one of the good things about this article is, although it will talk about the different health conditions, but it also has a part where it says the bottom line. Right, it's a summary. A summary of what, of for what, each condition, right. what the ketogenic and this, diet might do. And, and this really isn't, I mean, it's got good information, but it's not super. Um, it's not going to hurt your brain yes, to read it. Yes, it won't. Because they are talking about these studies, which I find beneficial 
because uh, some of these studies are animal studies, but some of them are also controlled human studies, right. and that's paving the way for more human studies. The problem is, is that a lot of times funding is lacking in newer diets like the ketogenic diet. So, Which isn't really a right, new diet. Right, but as we're progressing and the popularity of this diet continues, more and more studies are being funded and being done. So sure. this is good. This is like a base for that happening. Right. So, okay. so the next one is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Or PCOS, Okay. if you've heard of that. Now, until I had come into the world of keto, and keto on YouTube, to be honest, I had never heard of PCOS. And, and, and I guess, I hate to say it, but why would I? Cause I'm not, <laughs> you don't have ovaries? I don't have what? ovaries. But, <laughs> and I'm not trying to, trying to make light of it. I'm just saying I had never heard of it before we, I started, we started the keto. I had never heard of it. I never knew it was I ovaries. have indeed have had PCOS in oh. my lifetime. I had extremely cystic ovaries. I did not suffer with a lot of the consequences that a lot of women have as far as infertility or irregular periods or any of those things, but I did have, via ultrasound, I was able to see how cystic my ovaries were. Hmm. So wow. since beginning this lifestyle, I have not had any difficulties at all with this. And sometimes um, women with PCOS can have infertility and they can also have difficulties losing weight. So. There's a lot of anecdotal evidence to be found online. However, they did a very interesting six-month study of 11 women. Following a ketogenic diet, their weight loss averaged 12%, and their fasting insulin also declined by 54%, so almost half, hmm. and reproductive hormone levels improved. So, and two of the women of the 11 in this study became pregnant. Well. So... A lot of people who are, in fact, Jason Fung is writing a book all about PCOS. Oh, is he? Okay. Yes, that's going to be his next book. You know, he had the the obesity code, and then he had diabetes code, and now he's writing one for right. women about PCOS. So this lifestyle really can make a difference for those suffering from this condition. Right. So it's not just about weight loss. It can make a big difference. Right. It in can a lot balance of your cycles yes. and make it, you know, infertility go away if that is an issue for you, and just make you feel overall better. Yeah. Okay. So I did. I learned something tonight. Uh, Yay. Right here from this keto conversation. <laughs> uh, the next one that we're going to talk about is diabetes. Again, as I as I mentioned, I started ha and have been diagnosed with type two diabetes. So um, at first you have the metabolic syndrome. Right. Okay. Right. And then I had well, but see, then I kind of wonder. It's like okay, because. I think you were always like right on the borderline. Yeah, because they're they're looking at numbers. And, right, and, and you're fasting blood sugars yes, and your glucose yes, amounts yes. and insulin and yes. that kind of thing. So sometimes it's it's hard to tell unless you're like way at the end of the spectrum. Yes. Sometimes you can be yes. either or. And I was I was my my numbers were pretty high uh, when I first started. So. So you were again, never on insulin. You were only no, on. No, I was never on insulin. Like metformin, I was on metformin. Pre-diabetic. You yes, know. yes. And there are people who have full-blown diabetes that only still take metformin and aren't into insulin yet, but right. you, you were not taking insulin. Right, but this this actually talks about people with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Oh, definitely. Uh, benefiting yeah. from the ketogenic for diet sure. or for ketogenic sure. lifestyle. So Yeah, for sure. Would you like to read? Do you want to read the first no, study? No, you can go ahead and do okay. it. Okay. So the first study was a 16-week study. And 17 of 21 people on the ketogenic diet were able to discontinue or decrease diabetes medication dosage. Study participants also lost, I can't speak either, also lost an average of 19 pounds and reduced their waist size, triglyceride, triglycerides, mm -hmm. and blood pressure. Hmm. So that was the first study that they did. Yeah, and then the next one is a, in a three-month study. Uh, comparing the ketogenic diet to a moderate moderate carb diet, people in the ketogenic group averaged a 0.6% decrease in H1, HbA1c and a 12% and 12% of the participants achieved a HbA1c below 5.7%, which is considered normal. And so that actually happened to me. Yes. Where I was able to get down that to that, to that magic number. Right. It's not as low as they would like it to be. Um, but it's still low enough that you don't require medication. Exactly. 
Exactly. They would. They actually would like it a little bit lower, but um, but that was all through through keto. Well, and, and as you continue to lose weight, that will probably yes, keep going down and, and down. And I will also say that I actually have been back. Yes. I, I went back this year, and my numbers have stayed consistent right. after like two years off of yeah with no medication at all. So yeah. yeah. So so it's helped me. So I can attest to that. Right. So the bottom line for this is that ketogenic diets have been shown to reduce blood sugar in people with diabetes and in some cases values returned to a normal range and they were able to discontinue their medications or have their doses. Yeah. So. And and I will say this about this because I've had some experience with this. So you do, you know, you start keto and a lot of times your doctors aren't supportive of you doing. Right. Uh, that's just reality. A lot of doctors aren't supportive of you, of you doing a ketogenic diet, even low carb diet. But, and we are not doctors. Nope. Um, but we do know and have talked to too many people that have had this success where things have gotten reversed. But again, sometimes your doctor will be slow about uh, taking you off of medications. And, and it's just you needing to have a conversation with your physician. Because you need to be careful. Yes. Because sometimes it can happen quickly. And yes. you can start feeling crummy because you're taking more yes. medication than you need to. Than you need to. Because and it is happening quickly. That is a very good point. Because it actually didn't take me that long to be able to really reduce the medication right. and then eventually be able to get off of it. It didn't take that much time. Right. And, and so you do need to work with your physician as you do especially if you've been diagnosed with right because this diabetic. says 16 weeks yeah so we're talking just a matter of months so yeah so you, you do, definitely need to be you do need on, to be yeah on uh, top of keeping track of how you feel yeah. and letting your doctor know hey I might be taking too much right and let them know and let them know you know if, if, when keto's working for you let them know that hey this is what you're doing mm -hmm. And because one of the things they can't deny is the results. Exactly. Success. They can't deny the results. They can't deny the success. So they may not necessarily agree with what you're doing. Right. But they can't, you can't, they can't deny what they're seeing in front yeah, of them. Yeah, your blood levels. Yes. You know, your tests. I yes, mean, if they're they, seeing your HB, A1C going down, they can't do anything they, but say, okay, we got to take away some medication. Yeah, here. they can't, they can't deny. So just, just keep that in mind as you as you go along, especially if you are on medications that you need to first of all monitor it, stay in touch with your doctor about it, uh, and also just be aware that they may not be um, as supportive as you think. But some doctors are. There's more and more doctors that are you know learning more At about least open to the idea yes there are more and more doctors that are open and so it just kind of depends on who your doctor is but that's just something for you to keep in mind if you're if you're a diabetic and you're doing keto all right so number five uh no number four, number four. yeah uh some cancers and i'm gonna let you talk more about this because okay. you've got more you've got some experience with this or as okay. far as familial for, yeah you're familiar okay. with this so cancer is one of the leading causes of death worldwide and there are multiple types of cancer of course but it says in recent years scientific research has suggested that a ketogenic diet may help some types of cancer when used along with traditional treatments such as chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. Mm -hmm. So there are certain types of cancers that benefit from a ketogenic diet. And at the end of this, it says basically that most every cancer is helped by this type of diet. There's a very rare kinds of cancers that would be exacerbated by the ketogenic diet, but almost all types of cancers are helped with this. Um, brain cancer, um, cancers that have spread to other parts of the body. There's at least six or seven clinical trials written about in this article. And it's interesting to note that even if you are undergoing these other therapies like chemotherapy and radiation, that the side effects from those types of treatments can be lessened, can be lessened. by practicing a ketogenic diet, which is really nice because um, a lot of your feeling bad when you have cancer is going through these other treatments. You know, this being sick, losing your appetite, losing your hair, all of the things that happen when you're going through radiation and chemotherapy. So a lot of that can be offset by practicing a ketogenic diet. And my mother, who is a cancer survivor, practiced the ketogenic diet along with other things. She never had radiation or chemotherapy. She only had surgeries. 
but by practicing the ketogenic diet, and she also did some intermittent fasting, it made a very large difference in her cancer, the reversals of her cancer, and also her continuing to keep her cancer diagnosis at bay. Mm -hmm. so, and she's been, she is being checked for that. Yes, she's, and last year at this time, they gave her a clean bill of health. In fact, they told her that it looked like she'd never had cancer. Mm -hmm. So, and my mom had stage four. It had, mis it had uh, gone into her bones, it had gone into her lymph nodes, it was, stage mm -hmm. four so it can happen that's i this is not to say that this will work for every type of cancer yeah. it's not to say i'm sure there are varying degrees if you've been given a terminal diagnosis you know that might not be the situation for you but for people who uh, also would like to prevent cancer the ketogenic diet can be an assist in that in helping keep your inflammation levels low yeah. so Yep, and so, and you know, I never knew that your mom didn't go through the chemo. I never knew. No, that. she did not. I she opted not to do chemo, chemotherapy and radiation. She did have surgery, um, and she had grafts and things like that because her her cancer was on the top of her head. It was squamous cell carcinoma, and so she had to have the lesion removed. And of course, that you know took a large part of her scalp, mm -hmm. and so they took the scalp from. At first, they took a graft from her back and did it, and it did not take. Hmm. So it, the body rejected it, and so they actually had to remove the other side of her scalp, put it over here, and then take another graft. So hmm. anyway, she's, yeah. But, um, and miraculously, her hair grew back, and yeah. all of those things. Yeah, so true. it was, and she's still practicing a form of a ketogenic diet she's a little more towards the carnivore side now than she was previously but she's really enjoying it so yeah hmm. so the bottom line animal and human research suggests ketogenic diets may benefit people with certain cancers when combined with other therapies so there this article is not in any way suggesting that you only practice the ketogenic diet no, for not. your cancer it's not it's saying in conjunction with whatever else your doctor suggests but it can help like i said with the side effects of other therapies that you might choose to use right and when we do these types of keto conversations so first of all we're referencing an article right this one Again, we like it because it has it takes you to different studies right. that have been done. Because if you want to geek out and on re studies. And research that's <laughs> been done. But our hope, again, is that you, if it interests you, that you go and do your own research. And these kinds of articles can also be helpful if you have loved ones or co-workers or other people who might not be in support mm -hmm. of what you're doing. An article like this with actual studies in it might help people understand your line of thinking if you are practicing the ketogenic lifestyle and maybe people think it's unsafe or other things like that being able to send them an article like this to someone with those thoughts might be helpful in getting them to understand why you are practicing this lifestyle. yeah they may never agree with you but you know at least this is some kind of you know food for thought for them yes yes it gives them some kind of framework to say that, hey she's not they're not just really off the rocker and yeah just doing something crazy <laughs> but there actually is some research exactly. science behind uh, what you're doing so all right so the last one that we're going to cover today is obesity all right so I don't really have any notes on the obesity I can't read when, <laughs> what I have anyway because it's so small um, what they are referencing in this particular set of studies is the difference between people who use the ketogenic diet for their obesity versus people who used a calorie restricted diet. Yes. So it shows that a very low carb ketogenic diet can be more effective for most people than a calorie restricted low carb diet. And so the first study was a 24 week study and this was in men who followed a ketogenic diet lost twice as much fat as men who ate a low fat diet. And so we're talking fat. These people lost not, lost not just weight, but they lost fat. And we, and we said a low fat diet, not a low carb diet. Cause right. actually, you misspoke earlier. I'm you sorry, so low it, carb, not low fat. We don't want low fat. We want the we opposite want, of low right, fat. Right, right. <laughs> so the, these, so people on a ketogenic diet did twice as good as people right. on a low Losing. fat 
diet. Right. Or low calorie. Yeah. Yes. yes. Calorie restricted yes. is the words that they're using. Yes. So, and it said in addition to that, their triglycerides drop significantly and their HDL, their good cholesterol, increased. So part of that is not just practicing ketogenic diet, but overall weight loss can help those things as well. For some reason, your body reacts very well when you lose a significant amount of weight as far as your numbers getting better. So. Right, and, and one of the things that I noted here is that um, it says a ketogenic diet's ability to reduce hunger is one of the reasons why they work so well for weight loss. Right. It's because people aren't, aren't hungry. Right. And so... Because they're allowed to eat yes. more... Yes. I wouldn't say as much as they want because I mean you can still run into trouble if you're like non-stop eating even on the ketogenic yes, diet but believe me, I know that. <laughs> as opposed to calorie restriction where you're only given a certain allotment every day and you have to stay within that the ketogenic diet allows you more freedom in the ability to eat um, more satiating foods and not have to stay necessarily within a calorie budget so it can be a little bit easier to stick to like CJ said because you're not as hungry yeah. so and I think people who do keto and, and actually, you know, I've met people who do keto and then they stop, they get off of keto completely. Um, I know one person that I can think of who she told me she lost about 150 pounds off of keto, doing keto. And uh, I don't think she's really practicing keto pretty all that strictly right now. But I do remember talking to her about uh, I guess kind of the difference so when she was doing keto she wasn't as hungry as she is now in her kind of gone back to the sad diet and I think she's flipping back and forth between the two I'm not saying that's what you need to do but I'm just saying that there is a distinct difference because we we've talked about how come we've been able to stay on keto I would never want to go back to being hungry to all the time yeah that would be really miserable yeah to and, me. and 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 I can't say that it was it's different. It's not like it is. It's not you know, like a regular to, diet where you you know feel like you're deprived. I so. talked to Becca about that. My sister. We were talking about that just like a week ago, and how you know ten years ago we had practiced you know calorie restriction together because yeah. I was living with her at the time, and you know we we would go and get like you know smart ones or Michelinas or whatever because they were a certain amount of calories. Sure. And so you would you would eat that. And it was almost like eating a Jenny Craig or whatever, because this was your allotment of mm -hmm. your serving size and your calorie size. Eating that, and then, you know, like a couple of hours later, you wanted to eat the carpet. You were so starving. Right. If somebody had given you a piece of cardboard, you would have eaten it because you were so hungry. And it was just so miserable because you were constantly thinking about food. Yes. Because you weren't full. And you knew you couldn't eat anymore because you'd had your calories for the day, so you were done. And it was right. just so... Right. It's not the same as this lifestyle, no. in my opinion. No, it's not. And that definitely has to be a reason why there's a longevity factor with this lifestyle, in my opinion, for me, for myself. Yeah. That I've been able to be on this lifestyle for three years is because I'm not constantly starving and not constantly thinking about food all the time. Right, exactly. Okay, so the bottom line uh, for this section was that studies have found that the ketogenic diet diets are very effective for weight loss and obese people. A lot of you guys already know that. Um, this is largely due to their powerful appetite suppressing effects. Yes. And so that's the bottom line uh, with relation to um, obesity and, and obesity. hunger. Yeah. yeah. And so that's the first five that we're going to cover. We're only gonna, actually only going to cover ten. Yes. But that's the first five. And again, we're we'll, basically covering the most uh, common topics are most common things yeah. some of the other ones are a little bit more rare conditions yeah. that might be affected by the ketogenic diet but we are basically staying with your big ones just yeah. just for the popularity but if you want to read this for yourself we're gonna we will link to the article you can do a go in read all read the studies all they yourself. have all the footnotes I, yeah there was actually I was one I was surprised about was Parkinson disease and we're not going to cover that one uh, even next, even next week, are we? No, I not. haven't written but, it down. But that was one I had never um, I'd contemplated. Never contemplated, mm -hmm. had never heard of. In fact, I just heard uh, a guy that I listened to on the radio. I heard heard that he had been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and when I read that, I thought about him. 
Uh, I don't. I mean, I don't know from anybody, but right. I, I, but yeah, it I makes you wonder. Them. Yeah, you know how that might work. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. So, anyway, again, this is just food for thought, and no we, pun intended. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no pun intended. Food for thought, but we want to just again keep you informed. Uh, when we find good information, we want to share it with you, and then hopefully you'll go out and do uh, some further research yourself. Uh, if you're new here, these are our Keto Conversation segments. We do these every Wednesday. We do new recipes every Sunday. Consider subscribing. We would love to have you as part of our ketogenic family. We're doing keto as a lifestyle. We, uh, we started keto, what, three, four years ago? Three. Three, three years it'll, ago? It'll be three for you at the end of the year. Yeah, and so we live keto three. as a lifestyle every day, 24-7, 365 days a year. And definitely hit the notification bell because we're going to be doing this yeah. second set of topics next week and you don't want to miss out yeah, on that. Yeah, but we, we're we trying to help build a community of people that can share information and help each other succeed. We don't claim to know everything about the ketogenic diet or the ketogenic nope. lifestyle. We're learning just like you are. Um, but we do want and do care about your success and care about you having uh, success on keto and reversing uh, different health Some conditions of these things we talked that about, you yeah. may have. So because it's worked for us, it's helped us, and so we're a big proponent of trying to help other people through you know spreading the message about the keto lifestyle. So consider subscribing. We'd love to see you back here next week, and we will talk at you later. Bye bye. Peace. Peace.